What's up, I'm Troubleshoot, Elder Scrolls for Oblivion Remastered has released and in this video I'll show you how to get the best performance out of it. Just keep in mind this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all, instead in the description down below you'll find related optimization guides to get even more performance out of your system. So without further ado, let's begin. Now obviously as this is a brand new game I would definitely recommend you download the latest graphics driver whether you're with Nvidia, AMD or Intel, it'll definitely give you a performance boost. That being said, I haven't updated my GPU driver just yet, and performance is pretty good at 2K with a 3080 Ti. Once you get in game, you can either load into your save or change the options from the main menu. From here, there's nothing really we need to worry about on the gameplay tab, except for at the very bottom, camera motion. You can turn off head bobbing here if you get motion sick. It'll help you quite a bit. On the audio tab at the very top, nothing else to do here, except for making sure your audio output mode matches your actual physical device. If you're using headphones, choose headphones and you'll have a better experience. That being said, nothing here should affect your performance. On the display tab or graphics tab, we'll start off with general, which is the display settings. Window mode full screen should give you better performance, but borderless is going to be just fine on most modern Windows 11 versions, things like that. Display resolution should match your display or at least be compatible. For me, I'm running at 2K, so I don't know why it's saying ultra wide here. My display is ultra wide. It's just currently in 2K mode. Anyways, as long as it's your native native resolution, or at least a supported one, things won't be blurry, you'll get a good experience. Resolution scale, leave this at 100%. However, for most people, this option will be blurred out entirely, as we'll be using upscaling in just a moment. VSync, definitely turn this off. Frame rate limit, uncapped, unless you're streaming or recording, and OBS and things like that are stuttering or lagging, maybe YouTube in the background, things like that, in which case, cap it to slightly below the FPS that you're actually getting a game. For me though, uncapped is fine. Show FPS will show you your FPS count in the top right corner, and VRAM does the same for that as well. That should help you understand what your limits are on your system and what your performance is in game before you get to optimizing the rest of your settings. Field of view first person and third person are entirely your preference while they do technically affect performance. Leave these at whatever you wish. That gives you the best experience. Motion blur, I leave this off personally, but you can keep it on if you want. Disabling it should help alleviate motion sickness symptoms if you have any. Finally, screen space reflections is a relatively cheap method of getting really simple reflections. Leaving it on is fine in most cases. For these quality settings, I'll actually get in game. And the same goes for upscaling at the very bottom. So I'm still here in the Imperial City super early on. If you see the videos lagging, just keep in mind that's OBS struggling for resources, not the game. You'll see the true FPS count in the top right corner. In fact, doing one better, there's an FPS count on the left with a detailed graph and things like that. By default, I'm running at a solid 60 FPS, which isn't too good, but it's also more than playable. The default settings should be optimized relatively well for your system, but we can change things to get even more performance while keeping things looking great. Pausing the game, graphics, scrolling all the way down, quality. Starting off with the graphics preset, high is what it chose for me, but there is an option above it, ultra, which if we apply, takes me from roughly 64 FPS at high to around 56 at ultra to 68 ish at medium all the way down to low which only gets me to the low 70s which is not good to say the least this game is pretty demanding but you might be able to make back some extra performance even if you have to play on the lowest settings by pausing display all the way down to the very bottom using upscaling by default, you should be using DLSS if you're on NVIDIA or FSR if you're on anything else. If you happen to not be using upscaling at all, I would recommend changing anti-aliasing to off or TSR for better results. TAA is just terribly blurry and FXAA isn't the best. TSR is fine. Turning off upscaling, you'll see an even bigger drop in performance all the way down to around 53 FPS at low. The game should look a little bit crispier. However, using upscaling such as DLSS on balanced, which should be the default, or maybe quality should give you a pretty big jump in performance compared to what you had before. Example, quality gives me 66 FPS, balanced 71, performance 75, and ultra performance, which I hope you don't have to play on, is giving me 82. At such a high setting for DLSS, things still look surprisingly okay, but you'll notice some weird shimmer as you look around, certain shadows do weird things, things like that. It's not the best, but it's, it's okay. If you can, I definitely recommend playing with DLSS, probably at balanced, at highest, 
or if you've got a crazy system using a DLAA will give you the best possible experience or FSR on a native AA, which essentially just uses that same upscaling technology to make the native game look even better. Native AA is fantastic if you can afford it. Getting back to realism though, DLSS, balanced or quality is probably what we're going to be stuck on as well. This game is pretty demanding. Assuming you can run it anything higher than everything on low, here's some things that you should raise. First of all, texture quality is pretty much a freebie when it comes to FPS. At low, I'm getting a solid 90. If I crank it up to ultra, I'm still getting a solid 90. And that's simply because that option only really affects you if you happen to run out of VRAM. The more VRAM you have available in your system, the better you can make things look. And with just that one option, you should see a huge improvement in pretty much everything across the board, even if you're playing on low. At ultra, even though the VRAM counter is broken at the moment, you could expect somewhere at around, let's say, nine and a half gigs of VRAM. So if you've got more than that in your system, choose ultra. If you've got around six to eight, choose high. Maybe five to six, choose medium. And anything below that, choose a low. Going lower with this option won't gain you any extra performance, but going too high can cause weird stuttering and things like that. The only options I would wouldn't recommend raising here is Lumen Hardware Ray Tracing. With this turned off, I'm getting a solid 72 FPS, but turned on even on low, it drops me down to 62. So that's a loss of 10. However, changing this to any other option doesn't seem to cause me any extra FPS drop. So if you can handle it and you want ray trace lighting, well, it's not too bad of an option to have turned on. But for most people, off is what you need, especially if you don't have any ray tracing capabilities. That being said, Lumen software ray tracing does seem to be forced on at all times, which is a little bit weird. For this, we've got low, which is the default, which gives me around 70 FPS, and high, which gives me still around 72. So I would assume this is more of a CPU based tech, or at least is relatively light to run in your system. Still low, any kind of ray tracing, I'd recommend just leaving it all the way down. Everything else here has minimal impact, but we'll run through it anyway. View distance low at 72 all the way up to ultra has pretty much no impact for me and I assume has more of a VRAM cost than anything. You can comfortably leave this option up pretty high on most systems without seeing any kind of drop performance wise. Effects quality, surprisingly, while you'd think this only affects you in combat, low I'm at 70 FPS, medium 67, high 65, ultra 61. I wouldn't really recommend having this option at anything higher than low if you're struggling for FPS, but if you do notice some kind of difference, probably medium is where I would leave it, if anything. Foliage quality usually only affects you outside. However, from 70 on low to 70 on ultra, there's no difference at the moment, except for maybe some extra grass or something like that. I don't really know. That's probably what it is. I think some grass vanished here, but performance wise, there doesn't seem to be an impact at all, which is a little bit weird. Probably medium or high is what I'd leave this on. Shadow quality, low at 71. Medium, 70, so a very small FPS impact for a big visual difference to high 68 and ultra high 63. If you can, medium is going to give you a dramatically better looking game almost for free. Global illumination quality, low 70. Ultra 68. Do you notice much of a difference? If you don't, leaving it on low is fine. Reflection quality obviously only affects you when you have reflections in your site. If we, for example, have a look at the water over here, you can see them at 67 FPS on Ultra and 70. Go away, mud crab. Well, that didn't last long. Good Lord, what is happening in here? Okay, so dealing with the mud crab, 69 FPS on low to the same medium to 67 FPS with much better looking reflections to the same on ultra. I'd recommend if you can handle it, leaving reflections on at least high for a much better looking game. Post-processing quality, low 67 to ultra 66. There's not much of a difference here, except for vignetting around the edges of the screen, which only seems to appear at about high. And for that reason, high is probably where I would leave it as there's pretty much no FPS impact at all with this. The one FPS difference was more probably just margin of error, trees moving, things like that. Lumen we've already been through. Finally, hair and cloth quality for this. I'll need to head back into the Imperial City. Hang around some people. Low, we're getting 60 FPS. They're moving around, so there might be a bit of difference here. From hair quality low at around 64 FPS to hair quality ultra, still 64. Hair has improved a dramatic amount. However, performance-wise, nothing changed. 
cloth quality, low to ultra. Again, no difference performance wise, maybe one FPS at most. However, things should be moving around a bit more. Both of these effects don't seem to be too heavy. For that reason, I'll probably be leaving these on high, if not all the way up to ultra for wavier cloth and things like that. Ultimately, these are my graphic settings that I've come up with. I've only really lowered effects quality and global illumination quality, shadow, and then foliage, which seems to give me pretty good performance, at least compared to the base game with everything down on low. Ultimately, you will need a pretty good system to run this game. Again, I am playing at 2K, so dropping this to 1080p, and of course, making sure my drivers were up to date should give me a much better experience. That being said though, if you can handle it, this game really does look pretty good, at least compared to the old one. But yeah, that's pretty much that. If you have any other tips and tricks, do let me know down below. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.